Hello, beta testers. <laughs> I've been thinking. For a change, I know, right? You know why Sushi Squad can't be bad? Because Hogwarts Legacy is so good. It desecrates Elden Ring in the way of accessibility, uh, popularity, and as a weird bonus, uh, because some people have made it like their hill to die on, it allows the everyman to, if I'm, if I'm getting or understanding this properly, to drive the sword deep into the heart of woke culture that's just been ruining pretty much every form of media. It's literally and figuratively a magic trick to have lived up to the hype, to leave the majority of players, fans, satisfied, and in this case, to be genuinely inclusive without being preachy or needing to pat itself on the back to beautifully, masterfully deliver on a vision that realizes the dream plucked right from the minds of a typical fan that many have had. Attention to detail, intimacy with the material that betrays that they're a fan too. Rocksteady Games, you'll show each and every fan how woke you are when you reveal Poison Ivy. She's such a fan favorite. People love this character that they kind of want to root for her. For us, we thought, well, that idea of Harley, that's been pretty well explored in a lot of places. So we thought, well, what happens if we take her the other way? Oh, I gotta be zany. I'm your manic pixie. Like, like she doesn't need to be the manic pixie anymore. Rated PG-13. If you fail to demonstrate what a femme fatale can and should be the way that you did in 2015, it'll be the dumbest decision you ever make. If you make curves and jiggly titties your enemy, it'll cost you. This isn't exclusively about equal representation. It's also about inspiring confidence that your service has legs, has a future, is worth investing time and money in. This bad press as it pertains to the Avengers comparison, the live service, the battle pass, stacked on top of a downgrade, a reduction, removal of jiggle, and, and just like a, a, a weird preference in, I don't, it's always the women, isn't it? The, the character models. But you're expecting to sell skins. You deserve to flop like any of the other live services because it's funny that you want to succeed, but you're pretty much doing what Overwatch 2 and Destiny 2 is doing right now. Those games can treat their cuck bases however they want because by this point, they know they got them. You understand? But Overwatch needed to be good. Destiny 1 needed to captivate audiences to keep them. And just like DC wanted to rush straight into Justice League, Rocksteady, you jump right into the cancer that is like this live service thing, and you're refusing to demonstrate any understanding of what makes those types of games good. I'd wager that Fortnite and Genshin Impact are anomalies to you. Let alone Warcraft, Final Fantasy XV, Path of Exile, Lost Ark, Warframe, even RuneScape. You should have familiarity with Star Citizen to know what works and what you can uh, really hook some whales with, but y'all don't know. You know what I mean? This is the kind of thing that most people would nudge off of a table, like a cat, you know what I mean? The table could be empty and they would just slide that off of it, let alone a table with Spider-Man on it too. Spider-Man too. Destiny 1 launched in 2014, man. It had locations, decently large locations. You know, you could ride zip around on your sparrow. Kind of like Fortnite before Fortnite. You know what I'm talking about? Variety in PVE and PVP content, variety in enemies, a raid that launched shortly after, and loot that actually gave people a real reaction when they, oh, I got it, the, the Gallarhorn. You know what I mean? But Rocksteady's woke, woke ass is too modern to put a pretty woman on a damn box of your live service. 
This is the top downloaded mod for clothes in Hogwarts Legacy. Note the seam. It's all about that seam. Okay? And don't think I don't understand, the studio could be as crusty, boring, ugly, and as Twitter-centric as Volition, the Saints Row developers, but recognize that not investing some of what normal people are into will sacrifice it on an altar. If what you wish you do is kill this game before it can breathe, before it can bask in the sunlight, you're on the right path, you woke piece of shit. Wonder Woman looking fugly. Wonder Woman looking whatever, you know what I'm saying? Y'all made her whatever woman because the wannabe women would be too triggered seeing a busty, beautiful, toned, athletic woman. And of course, I'm not talking about the normal, sane trans people that aren't diving in front of anybody trying to buy a Hogwarts game. I'm talking about whoever's in your studio that thinks they're doing somebody a favor, when in reality, they're just ruining what people would like in the way of role play, what they would pay for. You're standing between yourself and profit. You're stupid and deserve no shortage of verbal lashings. And I hope that that scrutiny that is opened up when you dump this less than product while you're expecting more than what worked teaches you a lesson. That's not unfair. Of course, I'm trying to be better. Hmm, I'm trying to do better. The first nude mods in Gotham Knights were not for Barbara. They were for Dick. Dick Grayson, that's his name. Okay, I'm not, I wasn't, you know, what the hell? What does that tell you about the game's audience? You know, no shame. But to be frank, sexy men don't need anybody advocating for them because men are not so triggered that we would demand every man in a video game be ugly and fat. You know what I'm talking about? I'm sorry, it's true. I'm eager to see you cost yourself sales, Rocksteady, because even Gotham Knights had cake. Come on. Even Gotham Knights knew to market with them Jim Lee skins. Do you know what you're working with here? It's a D team. <laughs> Don't you think it's the pressure? Don't you think it's the barrel of that trans freaking bullshit that made this game this good? Because they you they knew. They knew that they would be getting it from all sides. And then, oh, it's a great game. Oh, what are we gonna do now? You you're gonna spoil the game for you, you poor genocide! It's genocide! Back to this live service battle pass game, right? I feel nothing short of a playable Batman and a Joker. Playable Batman and playable Joker is the only thing that's gonna turn this game around. That is my uh, uh, uh you know. Why not do your own thing? You know, are are you down with this James Gunn foolishness about marketing? <sighs> Oh man. Oh man, I don't want to I don't want to go there. You know James Gunn wants all the media for DC to share a universe and be voiced by the same characters. The woke psychosis that shrieks about inclusivity is excluding intelligent and satisfying freedom that should come with a society and a culture that is so used to the multiverse and alternative timelines that multiverse madness, everything everywhere all at once, motherfucking flashpoint movie out here getting made. For fuck's sake, Rocksteady. Why you gotta be boring? Why you gotta restrict yourself? Bring out another reality version of Batman and let Conroy's voice live on if it's gonna be a live service. Why restrict him to that? But you know what? Maybe that's the most tasteful thing that we can get going on if you're just going to shit the bed with ugly fucking Harley Quinn, man. The femme fatale Harley Quinn. You've made her ugly. Y'all took something that worked and y'all breaking it. Wasn't broke. Y'all trying to fix it. I'm re it really breaks my brain. I'm sorry. You know, it brings out the cringe naturally because every time I think about it, it's just like, wow. <laughs> now, the pieces have, I don't know. They've painted a really shitty picture, but who am I to judge a whole when I only have pieces of this pretty identical to Avengers pie that I'm looking at? But things could change. However, at the moment, I believe that just like the answer to how does the Sushi Squad kill the Justice League is they don't, I feel like the question how does Rocksteady convince the already jilted gamers 
that this totally not Avengers $70 games as a service, please buy our ugly flat no jiggle physics skins for our women characters. Uh, it's a gun game though, so even if we put Poison Ivy in, she's gonna be running around with like with 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 gats, baby. You know what I'm saying? The, the vines are going to hold the guns for her. The two vines going to be hanging off her back with Uzis in them. And she's going to be like, what's up, playa? And how cool would that be? But you're not cool enough as a studio to mix that shit up. You know what I mean? Ooh, what a shame. What a shame. What a shame. So I guess, I guess soon we're going to be figuring out why the co-founders left on so crazy a project, Conroy's last performance, but the co-founder said, you know what, it's time for us to make our departure. What a signal. And I can't wait to see what it means. In my opinion, Suicide Squad did not need to just get delayed. It needed a beta. So, good luck. You know, trying to get people to buy this without one of those. It's been a long time, man, and we're we're hoping to see someone demonstrate their understanding of Unreal Engine the way that Hogwarts Legacy has, because up until now, it's pretty much just been Fortnite, right? I know that may be rude to say, but as a guy that's looking for the next step in the way of multiplayer experiences with worlds that are interesting and, and fascinating, and, and not just like, hey, you want a battle royale? You think Hogwarts Legacy will add a battle royale, my nigga? And even that would be more hilarious than I could, you know what I mean? Expecto, hopeful, you know what I mean? 